will make my path straight. I know, I know, I'm gonna shout and praise. Just restocking our experiment supplies. This is the salt, and this is the sugar. Let's put these away. This week on Story Lab, we're talking about integrity. While we take a look at the story of some friends who did what was right, even when it was scary. I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. Today, we're talking about integrity, which is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. Look, can I uh, get a hand, please? This is heavy. So much sand for our experiment. Right, but that's just the foundation. We also need fuel. Which is? Sugar. We're making a lava snake. Oh, I've always wanted to try that. Well then, let's, let's make it. This is a really interesting group of ingredients. I know, right? Oh, wait, I forgot the sugar. Can you grab that, please? Yes. Thank you. Are these both sugar? Probably. All right, thanks for grabbing that. You're welcome. I love experiments with fire. <laughs> Me too. And since we'll be working with fire, we need a grown up. A lava snake is a chemistry experiment. We're gonna combine sugar and baking soda with the fire to create the snake. Sounds like we have to have the right ingredients for this to work. We do indeed. But let's take this outside. First, soak the sand with lighter fluid. Mm -hmm. 
Then mix your sugar and baking soda together. Thank you. Mm. It should be ugh, three parts sugar. And then one part baking soda. Mix it around a little bit. You can use a whisk. Ah, yes. And then we're gonna add our sugar baking soda mix into the middle. Now, we add our catalyst, which makes the chemical reaction happen faster. For our experiment, our catalyst is heat. All right. What's wrong with it? The, the sugar mixture is supposed to turn dark and then rise up. It's just not burning. Wait, do we have our ingredients right? Oh no. Salt puts fires out. Oh, that's my fault. I'm really sorry, I'll, I'll go get the sugar. We're not gonna see a lava snake if we don't have the right ingredients. Here's the sugar. How did you grab the salt? I'll be honest, I chose a random jar and I didn't look at the label. I, I should have double checked and did the right thing in the lab. Thank you for being honest. And at least salt doesn't do this. Ooh, that would be bad. I'm really sorry. You're forgiven. Let's do it again. Let's do it right this time. Yeah. Okay, first add the fuel to the sand. Then mix together the correct ingredients. Mm -hmm. Three things of sugar. One, two, and three. And one thing of baking soda. And then we pour it in. And now, the catalyst. Whoa! It just keeps coming. It's growing for sure. Ooh, it's still growing. <laughs> Look, it looks like it has a little tail. <laughs> You're not wrong. What should we name it? Trevor. Trevor. Trevor the lava snake. Good job, lava snake. That was awesome. When we put the right materials together, we get to see amazing things. It's also super cool to watch the flames. But fire can be pretty scary. Speaking of, it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the Old Testament, the book of Daniel. God had a plan to bless the whole world through one family, the Israelites. But God's people kept turning away from God. At last, they were conquered by Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. After his victory, the king chose several young Israelite men to be prepared for service in his court. God blessed these four men, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, with health, knowledge, and wisdom. Eventually, the king put Daniel in charge of a big part of the kingdom and appointed his three friends to help. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, everyone. I'm Jen. Soon after King Nebuchadnezzar put Daniel in charge of Babylon and appointed his friends to help, the king made a huge statue in gold. Wow, what a great looking statue. King Nebuchadnezzar sent for all the highest officials of Babylon to come celebrate the statue. And you, and you, and you too. <laughs> Everybody's invited. Daniel wasn't there. Perhaps he was traveling, but Daniel's friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were among the guests. Once everyone was assembled, a messenger called out. Hear ye what the king commands. When you hear the crazy music, you must bow to this statue and worship it. doesn't sound right. If you do not bow down in worship, you will be thrown into a blazing hot furnace. Oh, I'm bowing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. Let's try this out. Music, please. Ooh, it's so beautiful. In a far corner, everyone bowed down. Except for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They knew it wasn't right to worship anyone or anything but the one true God. Hey! hey. Well, excuse me, security. Why are they they're not, not bowing? bowing. They're, they're not, not bowing. bowing. 
O majestic King Nebuchadnezzar! Long live the King! What do you want? Majesty, you commanded us all to bow down before your glorious statue. You said everyone should bow down when the music plays. You said if anyone did not bow, you'd throw them into the blazing hot furnace. Yes, yes, and yes. Why are you telling me what I've already told you? Do you want to die? Oh, glorious king, we noticed those Israelites you assigned to help Daniel rule Babylon. Yes? We, we noticed, noticed they, they were, were not bowing. bowing. What? Their names are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In case you forgot. Yes, yes, yes. I'm very angry. Bring me Shadrach, Meshach, and Oredlego. Abednego. A friend named Flo? Abednego. Abednego! Bring them to me. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were brought to the king, who was furious. Shadrach, Meshach, and... Uh, Abednego. I know your name. I gave it to you. Yes, sir. Did you or did you not bow before my statue when the music played? Hmm? Uh, uh, I'll give you another chance. <clears throat> We'll play the music again, and this time you can bow to my statue and worship it. But if you don't, I will be forced to throw you into the blazing hot furnace, and what god could save you from that? Hmm? Listen, King, I know you're angry, but nothing will change our minds. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's, that's right. right. If you throw us into the blazing hot furnace, our god is able to save us from it. Simple as that. And even if we thought he wouldn't? We still wouldn't bow to your statue. Or worship anyone but the one true God. Nebuchadnezzar became even more angry. He was steaming. He ordered the furnace to be made seven times hotter than usual. Then the king's strongest soldiers tied up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and threw them into the blazing hot furnace. The fire was so hot, it actually killed the soldiers. But what happened next? amazed everyone. <gasps> Wait a minute. The king saw something that totally shocked him. Didn't we... Uh, di didn't we throw three men into the fire? Yes, yes your, your majesty. majesty. But, but, but why are there four men? None of them are tied up, and none of them are harmed. <gasps> and the fourth man looks like he's from heaven. Hey! Shadrach! Meshach! Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, get out of there! Come on! Wow! Look wow. at that! Not not they they don't even hair. smell like smoke. Wow, is this I awesome. mean, How can look it at be? the robes. Okay, okay, okay. Sh 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 quite, quite, quite. Stop. I have something to say. <clears throat> Before you all, I praise the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They trusted him and refused to obey my orders, willing to die rather than worship anyone besides their god. So, <clears throat> from this day forward, no one can say anything against the god of Israel in all my kingdom, and if they do, they'll have to answer to me. Yay! Then King Nebuchadnezzar honored Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He increased their rank and gave them even higher positions in the city of Babylon and the towns around it. The end. So they were inside the fire, and it was seven times hotter than usual, and they didn't get burned? Daniel recorded that they didn't even smell like smoke. I smell like smoke after making s'mores on a bonfire. No wonder the king of Babylon was amazed and worshipped God. So, what's our part in the story? When we choose to do what's right, others can see God at work. And that starts with following Jesus. Jesus is a perfect picture of what God is like. When we try to live like Jesus, our choices and actions can show God's love to others even better than words. Like choosing to be friends with someone who's lonely, even though no one is playing with them. Oh, or like helping someone who's tripped and fallen, even if it makes you late to class. Or you could welcome your new neighbor with cookies, even if they're a little different from you. 
Or if you have a substitute teacher and the rest of the class is acting up, you can choose to listen and show respect instead. Sounds like you have the right idea. See you next time. So here's the thing. When you do what's right, others can see God. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Just like when we finally added the right fuel to our experiment, we were able to see the cool chemical reaction. That's right. Hey, you might want to check the label on that. Yikes, salt in my tea? That would have been bad. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you, you next time. time.